Now I'm going to answer a question I could not find the answer for directly on the internet. So I'm recording this on the Fuji X-T4 and I'm recording it in F-Log. Now why F-Log? Well the reason to use F-Log is it allows you to store in a 10-bit 4K 420 video the same dynamic range as you should expect to get on reasonable film stock, which is much wider than the dynamic range that's available based on the BT709 standard for video. So the traditional way of doing things, of course, is to take the F-Log, grade it, pass it through a LUT, or what's called a lookup table that says how to take these values and convert the F-Log values into BT709. Stick that on YouTube, you're golden. The problem is what you get out is still BT709 with its tiny dynamic range. BT709 was designed in an era where TVs had a maximum brightness of 100 nits. Good TVs nowadays have maximum brightnesses up at around 1000 or above nits and can also manage much more dark than used to. So F-Log also can manage around up to 1000 nits and down to not quite as low as a top-end TV, but then film doesn't have that dynamic range. So I, I know off the top of my head quite a number of stops. SMPTE2084, which is the standard for the digital transmission and storage of HD, not for broadcast, that's hybrid log gamma more often, but PQ, which is certainly for video and storing and everything, has about an extra 10 times the dynamic range we're looking at, or about just over uh, three stops more dynamic range, as far as I can tell, than F-Log. But on the other hand, that sort of 1,000 nits to 10,000 nits, nobody really cares about. It's too bright. It's useful there as the future. So what I want to do is to take F-Log with its wonderful dynamic range and convert that directly into SMPTE2084 PQ, and then I can send that to YouTube. However, Fuji don't supply, supply a LUT to do this. They supply a mathematical formula, and I tried doing that, and I got somewhere, but it's really tricky and very slow to get the mathematics right using the tool I use, which is FFmpeg. And whilst I got the curve correct for the transfer function, couldn't really get that and all the colors correct. And I kept trying. However, there's a marvelous tool, an absolutely fantastic tool. Um, I think it's called something like LUT Creator. He keeps getting the name wrong. It is LUT Calc by Ben Turley. Further, I would like to say thank you very much for making this amazing piece of software, Ben. I'll show you. Uh, hopefully, I can edit this together. And that allows you to create LUTs to go from most curves to most curves and most color spaces to most color spaces. So it allowed me to go from F-Log to SMPT2048, but also even better, because F-Log has the same color space as uh, BT2020, which is the one that's usually used for HDTV. It's the one that's used for high dynamic range on YouTube. And it has massively greater colors than BT709. So just like if we go from the, the contrast, the luma differences in F-Log to the luma differences in BT709, we're chucking literally 90% of the information away. We have the same problem when we go for colors. The BT709 color space, which is like a triangle projected onto this mathematically generated surface of all the possible colors that a human being can see on average, it only represents a tiny amount of those colors. And none of the colors in BT709 are actually outside the range of what you would call reflected light colors. So 
a lot of colours are so intense, but we only recognise that intensity when they are light, giving that light off. Not when they are paint or, or an apple or something, which is why in HDR, if you super saturate an object or you have lights, they look like they are glowing, they are giving light off. Whereas in SDR, that never happens. It's not just the brightness. You can turn SDR as bright as you want. If it's configured to be standards compliant, it cannot produce the colours that may trigger our brains to think that light's being given off. So, anyway, back to LUT calculator. LUT calculator allowed me to create a LUT that goes directly from F-Log to uh, SMPT 2048PQ, and it, it will allow you to generate a whole sequence of LUTs for different brightness corrections. So I can now <clears throat> simply take this video in F-Log, pass it to an FFmpeg script, which all that script has to do is pass the video through a LUT, I pick which one to get the brightness just right, and boom, I've got SMPT2048. To send to YouTube, I do, do another step, which I'll go into, which is about mastering and brightness, because if I send the raw pipeline as I work on it up to YouTube, it will be ridiculously bright, and YouTube will crush it down, and it won't work on the SDD transform, but that's a slightly different matter, also using LUTs. So far in my channel, I've tried to always use free software, and uh, LUT calculator, kind of is because there's a free version on the web. You can buy it. And I thought it was so marvelous. I bought the uh, application um, on for my Mac for all of three pounds. So massive shout out to that. So it is possible to go from F-Log to HDR without any crushing down to BT709. Thank you very much for the people who put effort in the open source world and allowing this to happen. And I'm going to show some clips now at the end of this video of Cloudscapes, which I took today. Uh, you can watch as much as you like of them. These had no post-processing other than simply picking the LUT to correct, get the correct brightness. Uh, I, one was no, no brightness, the other um, one stop. And the rest of it is just the magic of the camera without being crushed and destroyed, going straight to the magic of HDR. Catch you next time. He has thrown in some more HDR of lakes and daffodils and things as well. These are all straight to HDR but pretty random stuff if you ask me.